Beneath the Pacific Ocean's shimmering blue lies a sleeping giant, an immense geological beast stretching over 40,000 kilometers, known as the Ring of Fire. It's responsible for more than 90% of the world's earthquakes and 75% of all volcanic eruptions. And now it's waking up. In July 2025, a colossal magnitude 8.8 .8 megaquake struck off the coast of Russia's Kamchatka Peninsula, unleashing powerful tsunami waves and triggering a chain of events that has left scientists both alarmed and fascinated. Within days, two volcanoes erupted, one of which had remained dormant for over six centuries. Simultaneously, nearly 6,000 kilometers away, Indonesia's Mount Lewotobi exploded in a fury of ash and fire, as if answering a seismic call. Is it coincidence or a deeper, more ominous connection? Could one massive quake set off a ripple of eruptions across the world's most volatile fault line? The signs point to a planet under pressure. As magma surges, plates shift, and ancient volcanoes awaken, one thing is clear. The ring of fire is reactivating, and what comes next could reshape entire nations. Before we continue, don't forget to click on that subscribe button and like this video as it's the best way to support this channel. Encircling the Pacific Ocean like a fiery horseshoe, the Ring of Fire is home to over 75% of the world's active and dormant volcanoes and experiences about 90% of all global earthquakes. This region is shaped by a series of converging tectonic plates, massive slabs of Earth's lithosphere that grind, subduct, and slip past one another in a never-ending ballet of stress and release. Subduction zones, where one plate dives beneath another, are particularly prone to megathrust earthquakes and explosive volcanic eruptions. These zones are found off the coasts of South America, North America, Japan, the Philippines, Indonesia, New Zealand, and Russia's Far East. The geological forces at play are immense, and while they are part of Earth's natural cycles, their consequences can be catastrophic. Over the past two decades, the Ring of Fire has seen increasing signs of strain, from Japan's devastating 2011 Tohoku earthquake and tsunami, to Chile's recurring quakes and eruptions. But the events of July and August 2025 suggest that something more systemic may be underway. A chain reaction of seismic and volcanic activity, potentially set off by the Kamchatka megaquake. On July 30, 2025, a magnitude 8.8 .8 earthquake struck off the eastern coast of the Kamchatka Peninsula, shaking the region with devastating force. It was one of the strongest quakes in the modern history of Russia. The rupture occurred along the Kuril Kamchatka Trench, a powerful subduction zone where the Pacific Plate dives beneath the Okhotsk Plate. The quake's hypocenter lay at a relatively shallow depth, around 19 kilometers, allowing its energy to transfer efficiently to the surface. The immediate consequences were dramatic. Tsunami warnings were issued across the Pacific, from Japan and Hawaii to the western coasts of the Americas. In parts of eastern Russia, waves of up to 5 meters were recorded. While damage in populated areas was limited due to the remote location of the epicenter, the geological reverberations have been anything but quiet. Just days after the main shock, the region experienced a cascade of aftershocks, some exceeding magnitude 6.5. These tremors destabilized slopes, fractured bedrock, and, perhaps most ominously, began altering the pressure systems within nearby volcanic systems. Within days of the earthquake, two of Kamchatka's volcanoes began to stir. Klyuchevskoy, the tallest and most active volcano in Eurasia, erupted first. Ash plumes rose into the sky as glowing lava flowed down its flanks, signaling that the quake may have accelerated existing magmatic movement within the volcano's chamber. However, it was the eruption of Krasheninikov that stunned volcanologists around the world. Long considered dormant, Krasheninikov had not erupted in over 600 years. On August 3, 2025, it erupted explosively, sending a dense column of ash nearly four miles into the sky. Local authorities quickly issued aviation alerts, and scientists scrambled to study seismic data in retrospect, hoping to pinpoint signs of unrest they may have missed. But it was not only Kluchevskoy and Krasheninikov that erupted after the megaquake. In fact, 
several other volcanoes in Kamchatka showed signs of eruptive activity or heightened unrest in the days following the magnitude 8.8 .8 event. Shivaluk, Bezimiani, Karimsky, Avachinsky, and Mutnovsky all showed evidence of erupting or entering an active eruptive phase shortly afterward. Analysts described this as a parade of volcanic eruptions, an extremely rare phenomenon wherein as many as six to seven volcanoes began erupting in close succession after the megaquake. The timing of these events has fueled speculation that the megaquake directly influenced the awakening of this long, silent giant. Seismologists believe that the quake may have changed the stress field in the region, cracking the crust and allowing magma to surge upward. This theory is consistent with historical patterns observed in other subduction zones, such as in Chile and Japan, where large quakes have been followed by volcanic activity weeks or months later. Thousands of kilometers away in Southeast Asia, Indonesia has also seen renewed volcanic unrest. In early August 2025, Mount Lewotobi Laki Laki on Flores Island erupted explosively, sending ash columns over 18 kilometers into the atmosphere, high enough to disrupt international aviation and darken skies across parts of the island. The eruptions were accompanied by pyroclastic flows, deadly avalanches of hot gas and volcanic debris that traveled up to 5 kilometers down the slopes of the volcano. Thousands of residents were evacuated, and emergency shelters quickly filled as authorities warned of possible lava flows and lahars triggered by heavy seasonal rains. Though not directly triggered by the Kamchatka quake, the Liwotobi eruptions may be part of a larger pattern of regional stress redistribution along the Ring of Fire. Indonesia sits atop the Sunda subduction zone, one of the most volatile tectonic settings in the world. A quake as powerful as the one in Kamchatka can redistribute pressure along connected plate boundaries, subtly influencing other fault systems thousands of kilometers away. Scientists are increasingly turning to global stress mapping models to investigate these potential long-distance interactions. The idea that earthquakes can trigger volcanic eruptions is not new, but it has gained greater scientific traction in recent years. The key lies in how seismic waves and crustal stress affect subsurface magma systems. There are several mechanisms by which earthquakes can induce volcanic activity. The first is static stress changes. Large earthquakes can change the static stress field in the surrounding crust, opening fractures, and creating new pathways for magma to rise. Secondly, there is dynamic triggering. Seismic waves can jostle magma chambers and hydrothermal systems, destabilizing the overlying rock and reducing the pressure needed for an eruption. Magma pressurization is also a possibility. Earthquakes can also cause gas bubbles and magma to expand, increasing pressure within a chamber and hastening an eruption. The Kamchatka megaquake likely employed a combination of these mechanisms, particularly static stress changes, to awaken both active and dormant volcanoes. The pattern now unfolding around the Ring of Fire is not without precedent. In the wake of the 2004 Indian Ocean earthquake, which triggered a tsunami that killed over 230,000 people, several volcanoes in Indonesia and the Andaman Islands erupted. Similarly, the 2010 Chilean megaquake was followed by eruptions of Lima and Villarica volcanoes. And in Japan, the 2011 Tohoku earthquake led to increased activity at several volcanoes, including Shinmodaka. These examples suggest that megaquakes can act as catalysts, destabilizing volcanic systems already under pressure. What makes the 2025 Kamchatka quake particularly alarming is its combination of magnitude, location, and rapid volcanic aftershocks. The possibility that similar sequences could unfold elsewhere in the Ring of Fire such as in Alaska, the Philippines, or Central America, demands close attention. The reactivation of multiple volcanoes following the Kamchatka earthquake is not just a scientific curiosity. It has real-world implications. Volcanic eruptions can disrupt air travel, destroy infrastructure, and displace thousands of people. In a worst-case scenario, 
multiple large eruptions could inject vast amounts of ash and sulfur dioxide into the stratosphere, cooling the planet and disrupting global agriculture. Furthermore, if stress redistribution continues along the ring of fire, it could increase the likelihood of major seismic events elsewhere. Japan, the Philippines, Chile, and even California are all regions where locked faults are overdue for rupture. The interconnectivity of tectonic systems means that no nation along the Pacific should be complacent. Monitoring agencies such as the United States Geological Survey, the Kamchatka Volcanic Eruption Response Team, and the Indonesian Center for Volcanology and Geological Hazard Mitigation are on high alert. Satellite data, GPS sensors, and ground-based seismometers are all being used to detect signs of magma movement and crustal deformation. Early warning systems are being reviewed and, in some cases, expanded. As seismic and volcanic activity intensifies around the Pacific Ring of Fire, scientists are closely monitoring what could be the early stages of a larger geologic shift. The Kamchatka megaquake and subsequent eruptions in Russia and Indonesia suggest that stress is building across multiple segments of Earth's most volatile fault line. While it's impossible to predict the exact timing or location of future events, historical patterns show that one major rupture can destabilize distant fault zones, increasing the likelihood of both earthquakes and eruptions elsewhere. Despite technological advancements, the scope and scale of the Ring of Fire's activity make complete prediction elusive. Communities living near tectonic plate boundaries must remain vigilant, prepared for sudden disruption. As Earth continues its restless shifting, the chain reaction seen in July and August 2025 may be only the beginning of something far more dangerous yet to unfold.